Hello, gentle viewers. This is Av Guardian welcoming you to Out of the Park Baseball 23 with the Pittsburgh Pirates. In our previous episode, we found a hill to die on. <laughs> oh, as we traded out our formerly expensive first baseman. But don't fret, my friends. We have instead acquired Tony Pagan. Uh, now, Mr. Pagan, for whatever reason, was non-tendered by the team that drafted him. And so we grabbed him for basically a song. And we have somebody now that combines power and contact without sacrificing anything significant other than money. Uh, we are paying a portion of Sean Hill's salary, but it's, more than, it's better than paying all of his salary. And with the addition of Nate Sinclair... I think we've got a great chance to make some really big waves this season. Um, uh, other than that, the only other major change to the lineup is uh, Hugo Arevalo. Uh, Mr. Arevalo wasn't meant to be our opening day shortstop, but unfortunately, uh, there was an injury. Uh, Freddy Suarez who got some Rookie of the Year votes last season. Uh, actually, no, he didn't. At least not enough. Alas, is unavailable at the start of the season. But he'll be back very soon. He'll be back quite soon. Um, other people worth mentioning. Uh, Jacob Miller is somebody that we're calling up because he plays every position that you can think of. I'm really excited to see what he can do and how he can make our team more effective. Um, we acquired new third baseman in the Rule 5, Juan Castro. This is mostly about... Um, the, he's only here because he has to be. And because I think there is a genuine possibility he could turn out to be a very solid third baseman in his own right. We have Ernesto Turner still. Uh, he is going to be kind of our all-purpose utility knife for offense. And, yeah. Our pitching staff, the big name, of course, is Mr. Nate Sinclair. He's a new starting pitcher that we signed for a lot of money in free agency. Hopefully, he'll be worth it. I see zero reason why he wouldn't be. We have Mr. Juan Love coming back to give us a full season, hopefully. And then Jose Espino, Victor Rios, and Mike Grasham. Uh, with Spandar Avishan, who had a pretty decent season last year, is available to back us up if we need it. Our bullpen, we brought back Mike Tinch. Mr. Tinch has been signed to a contract extension for a couple more years, which I think is very reasonable. Uh, the bullpen is probably the weakest part of this team, uh, but we have a little bit more depth than we're used to having. And in particular... Uh, Justin Tufts has the capability to be a really great reliever. Um, I'm already impressed with what he's been able to do last season, and I'm looking forward to even more this season. We'll still have Winton Julian, uh, who we acquired in, uh, in trade, who is very good at striking people out. There's no disputing his ability to strike people out. Manny Osorio, who seems to constantly underperform. Like, I don't know how somebody with his skill set struggles as badly as he does, uh, but he does. And I'm hopeful that we'll see a little bit more consistency out of him before we need to start making some moves. So, this is your opening day roster. Uh, let us see what we can accomplish in the baseball verse. That's what I like to call Major League Baseball the baseball verse. Uh, I'll never say that again, though. Not even once. Oh, yeah, I miss it. We elected a couple Hall of Famers last year, and, uh, and Manny Pozo and that reliever whose name I've already forgotten. Eric Corrigan? I think Eric Corrigan is the other one. Four, 16 to 10? Let me, let me check that out right now. 16 to 10 is pretty bonkers. Oh, in Colorado, of course. We scored seven runs in the eighth inning. Oh, that would have been a wild one. 
Pagan got a homer. So did Mike Soto. So did John Navio. Very nice. Um, Hugo Arivalo is actually playing fairly well. Um, I don't really need Ernesto Turner, but I do want Ernesto Turner. Um, I guess he sent down Arivalo though, um, because the alternative would be returning Castro. And I want to give him a chance to show us if he can do anything. He might not be able to, but I just feel better with him in our minor league system. Then again, our follows off to such a good start. I'm going to return Castro. Uh, Suarez instantly gets his job back, but this gives us just... So much more flexibility to have somebody of the caliber of Mr. Arevalo available. Uh, that also lets us kind of downplay Jacob Miller a bit, uh, which is also very good. Um, I do like it of Arevalo getting regular reps at shortstop and second base. I think he can contribute pretty well there. So I have no problem with this and would like to see what happens here. Same thing. I think once a week is fine for that. Okay. Let us, my dear comrades, advance time a bit. I'm waiting for one specific email. Because if it doesn't come, uh, then we're going to have a bit of an issue potentially. That wasn't the one I meant. Uh, specifically, I have a contract offer out to uh, Pagan. Don't I? Pending offers. No, I don't. Well, let's fix that right now. Uh, he's already getting expensive. Damn it, I was going to try to lock him in for super cheap. Oh, well, we'll see how he does by the end of the season. I don't want to commit to him for a significant sum unless I have good reason to do so. Although he's going to be pretty amazing, so I doubt very highly that I'll just let him walk. But I'm in the driver's seat as far as um, bringing him in. So I am more than happy to sit tight and see how the season progresses before I make any drastic decisions. Um, Justin Tufts is improving in some ways. Nate Sinclair is about the same. Mike Grasham is losing velocity, which means his time as a regular starter is rapidly departing. Jose Hespino is even worse. I thought they would both age. I didn't think they would both age this quickly. Uh, Mike Soto is about the same. Alex Dialba. Okay, first things first. I cannot handle having pitchers that can't pitch that well. Maybe punting on one is fine, but not punting on two. And so I think we're going to swap Avishan and Grasham, and Grasham is going to go to be our emergency starter long reliever. Um, that might let his career stretch out a little bit longer. Actually, Grasham is pitching better than Espino. 
Oh, yeah, we've got to keep Grasham. Espino throws way too badly now. There we go. And you're going to get swapped out there. I had a feeling this would happen, um, and that's why I kept Avisham on the Major League roster. Uh, we need to think about who the next man up might be. Um, it could be Alex Dialba, but it could be someone else as well. We'll have to think about that. Let us go ahead and proceed. Because I don't want to have a team where one of my starters is just serving on meatballs uh, all the time. Wow. All of a sudden, we're on a mini scoring drought. We're not scoring as much as we were. And 111 run performance doesn't make up for it, guys. We need consistency. I want to see lots of runs all the time. Okay, Freddy Suarez, you're developing a, a reputation and not a good one. Um, you seem to keep experiencing injuries, and that is not a great look for you. Um, you'll be back in just a few weeks, but that doesn't solve the immediate problem. I can't use Alex Rosado. Whatever his talents, playing shortstop is not actually one of them. Um, Emilio Galvez seems like a perfectly cromulent choice, but Manny Toro has the benefit of... Oh, wow, Manny Toro's losing his defense. Yeah, let's go ahead and call up Galvez and just... I guess Arvalo goes back to play shortstop. It's not my favorite choice, but it's the only choice I've got right now. And then we're going to real fast regenerate the depth chart. And you. And every seven games. And we proceed. Um, losing Ernesto Turner isn't the end of the world. Um, I've got plenty of people who are mostly bats that I can call up. Um, Alex D. Nuez is a pretty fair choice, both because he can play so many different positions, but also because he's a pretty decent power hitter. We're not going to lose as much that Turner was bringing to the table with without New Year's. Uh, and then you're gonna do once a week. And once a week. I guess Galvez is a better shortstop than Arovalo, but I don't necessarily care. Uh, Navio is player of lay week. Um, he is recovering. That's fine. Oh my god, what is with all the injuries this season? It's truly bizarre. Like, that's two starters and an important reserve, all of whom are going to miss significant action. Um, I guess Julian Williams get his, gets his shot. Why would you show me his pitching stats? I don't care. Yeah, Julian Williams, uh, welcome to the big leagues. And you're going to be pushed right into service playing center field. Every single day. Uh, not Jacob Miller. Julian Williams. And I'll just quickly double 
check. Yep. And then go ahead and recalculate the depth chart. And do the same thing. Like, Williams has the capability of being a truly outstanding player. And I don't even mind the fact that he could also pitch. I just don't want him pitching frequently. That is not why you're here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use you as a an alternate lefty specialist, basically. Um, Let us advance forward forward to the month of June and then we can have a chat about what to do next John Navio currently the best overall hitter in Major League Baseball that's pretty tight I gotta say I enjoyed that a lot uh, Justin Tufts is getting better. Rios is getting a skosh worse. Juan Love is getting better. Calderon is getting worse. Abishan is getting a little better. Uh -huh. Hugo Arivalo is improving pretty drastically. Uh, as is John Navio and Henry Salgado. Uh, Willie Rivas is getting better. Luis Gutierrez is putting heat on his fastball. That's a good way to get some attention. Uh, Salvatore Espinosa has already hit a bit of a wall, uh, which, is, which isn't thrilling, but it still makes him one of my better prospects. Uh, so I don't necessarily mind that, but it is a little bit sad to see some of the bloom come off the rose already. He's still so young and potentially so good. Uh, cool. So what's going on this season? The offense is on point for the most part. The offense is on point. Jordan Munoz is the big exception. He's really off to a bad start this season. Uh, when and if he heats up, we're going to be in tremendous shape because Salgado, awesome. Pagan, exactly what we wanted. John Navio, out of his freaking mind. Uh, we're even getting good offense from the lower parts of the order. Uh, one of the things you notice last season, we tended to be sort of top heavy. I think we're much more well distributed now. I will make John Navio the cleanup guy because he's definitely earned it. And is there anything else you need to do offensively other than just hope Munoz figures out his shit? Uh, not really. Uh, Munoz kicking it into gear is going to help a lot. And let's not lose sight of the fact that um, Almaquare is off to a very cold start. This is not normal for him. Uh, we have two hitters who are not off to their normal level of talent. I bet if we took a look at Babip for each one of them, it would be really low. Um, it is a bit low for Almaware, but it's not as low as you might think. Interesting. He's seeing plenty of pitches per plate appearance. His strikeout rate has spiked. This is a bit of an issue. Hopefully he can sort that out. Munoz is by far the more concerning problem, though. Uh, this is somebody who's always been a top contributor, and now he just isn't. And again, his bad is off by a little bit. But in every way he could have gotten worse, he has gotten worse. His strikeout rate is, is insane. He needs to stop that. Uh, he needs to stop striking out and start hitting baseballs really well. Or we're going to need a new DH sooner rather than later. The pitching staff is fine. It isn't brilliant, though. And that's a bit of a disappointment. Mike Tinch, for whatever freaking reason, has decided this is the year to stop pitching well. Uh, 
He's giving up home runs at an unprecedented rate. He's walking every hitter he faces. He is under a very significant drop. I have every confidence he'll figure it out, but that does concern me that my most important reliever is pitching poorly. Tufts and Fuji are pitching poorly is more important, though. Uh, right now, of all our people designated middle relievers, only one is pitching well, is Manny Osorio. Um, Calderon is fine. Espino is whatever. Um, yeah, Fuji has decided that walking people is fun, and you should do it as often as possible, along with giving up home runs. Tough's home run rate has also spiked. So yeah, we're, we have this really interesting problem where most of our hitters, pitchers, are giving up home runs at a higher rate. That should normalize, though. Um, that should normalize, and that'll help bring everything else back in order. In some ways, look, Justin does actually pitching better than he's pitched before. He's striking people out at a much higher rate. Uh, he is walking people a bit more, uh, but that's okay. We just need him to not give up so many freaking homers. That'd be lovely. Uh, so, the rotation is fine-ish. Um, Victor Rios is another guy who's got historically high home run rate. Are we, like, tipping our pitches as a team? Like, that's three different players we've already seen that had a gigantically expanded home run rate. It could just be bad luck. So I want to give it more time, but that is somewhat concerning to me. Um, let's talk to Pagan again. I have Pagan because of arbitration. Look, we did five years at 7.5 million. You're going to laugh your ass off at that, but... What if we do and I'll throw in some bonuses here. If you pitch, if you give me 500 plate appearances, one million dollars. If you win the MVP, two million dollars. And if you go to the All-Star game, 750,000. How does this grab you, my friend? Nope. Yeah, I'm not going to keep fighting on that. That's not worth it. He's just going to keep telling me no. Ah, uh, so that's fine. Grasham would have to be pretty freaking stupid to turn to, to opt out of this contract, but I kind of hope he does. I'd feel really happy if he did. I'd be pretty delighted. Do we try to lock up Jordan Munoz now, when his value seems to be the lowest? I get like four years out of you. you your, your amount didn't increase by that much. This is just trying to lock up a player for way under his market value while I still can. And to sweeten the deal, if you give me 500 plate appearances, I will give you uh, $500,000, a million for the MVP, and 500000 if you make an all-star team. Nope, okay. I'm trying to get creative so that we don't have to spend quite as much money in arbitration costs, but that might be unavoidable. It's fine. All right, friends, less advanced time up to international free agency signing. Um, I'm not going to put him on the IL. Uh, we're just going to run a man short until he's healthy. That's going to put a little more 
uh, weight on some pitchers that aren't pitching that well. Uh, so hopefully they're able to rise to the occasion and give us good innings when we have them. Jose Fernandez is a reasonably good reliever. I don't hate this deal, but I don't want to pay for it either. Uh, so I will politely but firmly decline right now. My opinion might change if we hit the all-star break and we're still hemorrhaging uh, players and we're really bad off, but we'll see what happens. Freddy Suarez is still needing time to heal. That's okay. Julian's going to miss another week. Oh, that's right. We're playing with the draft lottery this time around. Neat. I forgot I enabled that recently. I mean, we'll never be in the lottery. We'll never have a realistic chance of getting a good draft pick. But hopefully with the way that the draft system is seated now, we'll be a little bit better. Really? Really? Can we not keep having people have these giant injuries? Like, what the hell is happening this season? I can't seem to keep middle infielders healthy. Um, all right. It's not Rosado. It's never Rosado. I guess Bruce Aguirre can be called up and do some things every now and again. Guys, stop trying to make Servine a more regular catcher. It doesn't need to be. All right, we get Freddy Suarez back. So thanks for your brief Major League appearance, Aguirre. You're gone now. Is Arovalo still killing it? He's not really killing it. He's playing well, but he's not, like, destroying baseballs. And that just... If he's not destroying baseballs, I need my better shortstop out there. Because he'll make my entire team better. So let's do that plus one of these. And making Arevalo a super sub is something I can really get behind. I love the idea of Arevalo getting lots of regular playing time with lots of different positions. It'll keep his bat in the lineup, but more importantly, uh, it'll let him improve at all the different positions. Um, so that's a nice little mini shot in the arm. Uh, damn, Julian Williams. You hit for the cycle. That's pretty wild. Pretty wild. Okay. So, Franklin Verdeen literally just hit... Or, sorry, Julian Williams literally just hit for the cycle. Um... He's hitting okay, but not brilliantly. So I think it's okay to send him back to the minors, unless I send Galvez back. Interesting. I send Galvez back and keep Williams with Verdeen starting again? Let's give that a look. Uh, but Verdeen might already be worse than Williams. Verdeen does have the raw speed, and he is a pretty talented center fielder. Um, so let's go ahead, and I will put Verdeen back into the lineup. I could platoon him. Verdeen doesn't hit righties as well as you'd think. What about Williams? Williams is much better against righties. Let's try this then. 
Nuts try Julian Williams uh, starting in center field against right-handed pitching. That'll both help us get Verdeen uh, warmed up a bit more. Uh, and it'll also um, give Williams some more at-bats to see if, if he's got a future with us. Uh, let's go ahead and push forward a bit farther. Okay, we can have Ernesto Turner back. I'm going to let Turner rehab in the minors. Uh, mostly because he was hitting really poorly to begin with anyway. And I'm hopeful that some reps in the minors will help him rediscover his stroke. So that'll sort itself out shortly. What do we care about Khalil Roberts? Oh, maybe that's somebody I was thinking of drafting uh, and I decided not to. Well, that seems pretty silly of me. Uh, Tincha's getting slightly worse. Grasham is getting quite a bit worse. Abishan's declining slightly. Uh, this is not a great look for any of you. Uh, Almaguer is getting better. Soto's getting better. Suarez gets a little bit worse. Williams is about the same. Navio's getting better. Munoz is getting worse. Okay, I need Grasham out of the rotation at this point. Um, there's really nothing that he offers me that is worth keeping. So the question is, which pitcher could fill that role with some level of talent and some level of skill? Oh my gosh, I sent down... I didn't want to send down Miller. I want to send down Galvez. You little shit. Um... Martin Rubio is interesting. Let me sort by overall. It's Jay Jackson. Jackson's got good movement. Pretty good stuff. Not amazing control, but he's been holding it down in the minors so far this season. Um, Fastball cutter changeup, but he's a lefty. That's liable to be better than Grasham. So I'm going to go ahead and what do I do with Grasham? I mean, Fuji is still struggling. I'm going to send him to the minors. I'm going to call up Jay Jackson. Jackson gets the rotation over Grasham, and then Grasham is going to be <clears throat> probably a middle reliever. Um, I think that makes sense. Okay. Let us, my friends, then reset this, the depth chart because I want Jacob Miller on this team. Uh, he's too valuable at too many different positions. He just makes us a more, a more valuable team. Uh, start to finish. And then let us go ahead and determine who in the international amateurs would make an excellent, an excellent Pittsburgh Pirate. My friends, there's a lot of real good choices here. There's a lot of real good choices here.
Uh, Nathan Armstrong is just a hitter. He's not really a pitcher. He's not really a, a, a good fielder. Same thing for Jose Cardosa. You're way too all or nothing. Although I do think there's something attractive about your raw capabilities. Garza's a third baseman, but he's... I think Garza's my pick. I'm going to shift him to third as soon as I can. I think he's got a much higher ceiling at third because that tremendous arm. Um, but his battle played just about anywhere. Actually, it would be remiss of me not to at least look at Chris Melker. Oh... Yeah, it's Melgar. He's the best hitter in this draft. And he's got enough chops that I could play him in any outfield position. And he's even a fairly competent first baseman. So I think this is the best overall choice for us. Uh, welcome to the Pirates. I hope you join us and tell your friends. I will tell you what, friends, the pitching coach is on the thinnest device. Uh, if we can't sort some of this stuff out. We have a really good coaching staff, but they're all getting along really, really well, which is excellent. All right. Eric Basabe, I would love for you to stick around if you are interested. I think you've been a very, very talented coach. Juan Sosa is just incredible. I really don't want to lose his overall coaching talent level this early on in his career. I think he could easily be a bench coach, if not more, in the very near future. Uh, Gene Kelly is an amazing hitting coach. More of that, please. Uh, Craig Barnes is an amazing pitching coach. Yes, please. All Barney all the time. Sam Baltz isn't a top tier hitting coach, but he's good enough that I don't want to disrupt things. Omar Lopez is too good as a pitching coach to let go. Uh, as, as long as he wants to come back, I would like to bring him back. And then what about Christopher Marte? He's a really good pitching coach. So let us offer him a sweet deal to return to the Pittsburgh Pirates for even more baseball shenanigans. Wow. Okay, a, a bit of a bounce back there. We're losing a lot of one-run games. Uh, that does give me pause for concern. Now that's an interesting idea. I do want Sal Rada to pitch for me very much, but without an injury, I don't know that I have a spot, but I think an injury, I think a spot just opened up. Uh, but we will further examine that momentarily. I did not even remember offering him... Oh! I remember you now. Okay. Yeah, we're picking 43rd. Um, that's not great. Like, I'm sure there's going to be at least one good player left by the time we draft. I'd be pretty shocked if there weren't. We're going to miss out on the really good players. That's that's just the law, okay? Our best at is hope that somebody wants a gigantic bonus that only we can offer them. Hello, Jai Woodward. Woodard. 
Okay, really good stuff, movement and control. Okay. Sinker cutter, curveball change up slider. All right. Pretty good stamina. You're probably not gonna throw super hard. I am utterly fine with that. I am not likely to find a player of this caliber by waiting, so. Draft player. And auto draft to my next pick. Okay. Danny Rios. Good pop, good contact, okay discipline. I see no reason not to give you an opportunity, but I will look at some other choices as well. Jose Lacayo. You're a better all-around hitter? But I think Mr. Rios is the better choice. Uh, I think... No, it's, it's Lacayo. Lacayo's got a much higher floor. So I think drafting him makes a lot of sense. All right. Michael White is not that impressive to me. I will easily pass that up. If you're wanting to draft a, a, a high school closer, they better have really good velocity and they don't okay angelo robinson is a fantastic value he's a good all-around hitter that could be legitimately a brilliant shortstop angelo robinson get on my team immediately um Another low velocity guy. And none of these guys have the kind of frames that convinced me that yes, they will be, uh, that they will end up being a great pitcher with a little bit more oof in their stat. A contact first, first basin with a little bit of pop is an intriguing commodity. Let's get us some of that. Michael White just keeps slipping. I'm willing to give him a shot at this point. Um, okay, Juan Velo. I have a good feeling about him. Hey, mom and dad, mwah, brilliant. Just a brilliant naming decision. That is indeed quite a heavy thrower. Uh, I've got to take a guy named Juan Velo that actually throws really reasonably hard, don't I? It's it's mandatory. I love the bat, but you're not a second baseman. Like, not even a little bit. And my big concern with you is you don't have much secondary skills. So if you're not hitting, like, 350 every season... I don't see this working out. Uh, I will have to pass on you. Israel Rodriguez, on the other hand, seems a little bit more well-rounded. This I don't love. But we're talking the sixth, the seventh round at this point. You've got to take what you can get. And I think he is reasonably good. I've got an eighth round pick now... Wilson Pacheco throws hard enough that I'm willing to give him an opportunity. Uh, so I will draft him. And I will call him my son. No, I won't. Uh, contact potential is still Cam. But a guy like Alexis Gonzalez is actually a better fit. Because, yes, he doesn't have the raw contact tool, but the rest of his skills are good enough that he'll be a productive hitter. No matter what happens. Uh, so I think Gonzalez is the better choice. We're going to bring him on to the Pirates. Uh, 
Xavier Atkins, decent outfielder, good gap in contact, rarely strikes out. I'm willing to give that a try. That's 10 rounds. I will look for one uh, Dark Horse pitcher and then probably move on. Danny Chacon just keeps slipping. I know he doesn't throw that hard, but at this point, he's got an all-around okay toolbox, so we're going to bring him in. Oh, sorry, I need to auto-draft until it's my next pick. And now I can't have Danny Chacon. Well, I deserve that. I don't really care about anyone else then. Uh, keeping it real with y'all, I don't really see anybody else that excites me in any real way. Uh, oh my gosh, there we go. Friends, we have spent a lot of draft picks to rebuild our pitching staff, and while I think we're very far from seeing immediate results, a guy like Jai Woodward, Woodard, who apparently wants to called Coley. All right. I mean, hey, you do you, boo. If that's the name that gives you joy, then that's what I'll call you. Even though I'd rather call you Woody. Uh, regardless, I think we've got a decent draft class that's got a bit of potential to it. Especially we're picking so late in the first round. Uh, that's going to keep being an issue unless we lose a bunch of games, and I'd rather not do that. If it's all the same to you all. Let's advance to the All-Star break. We've always been kind of a second-half team. Uh, maybe this will be no different. And our players will play better. Or, instead, Mike Soto could get hurt. Uh, that's a thing that could happen. What is with this season and all the injuries? Like, it's truly bizarre. Um, Turner's bat probably fits best, but he can't play third. Arevalo can play third. And he's still hitting at a decent enough level that I don't mind him playing th at third every day. So we're going to do that. Oh, uh, you're not going to be the starting the, the number of the leadoff guy, though. That is 100% not a thing. Um, but I guess for Dean and Williams can be our leadoff guys. Sure. Losing Mike Soto is really unfortunate. He's become an important piece to our offense, and we're going to be a lesser team until he returns. Um, but we have the all-star break. We can try to get healthy, and we can see what happens. All right. So who made it from Pittsburgh? Nate Sinclair... John Navio. Really? Only two All-Stars? Only two All-Stars. Okay. I see how you are, game. Is that Mai Zhao still playing? No, that's a different guy. Okay. Wow, look at Juan Espinosa coming over to Washington and being like, Oh yeah, I'm a really good player. Hmm. I remember you, Espinosa. I remember you vividly. Oh, well. Um, what about the prospect roster? Michael Broadwater made it.
And that's it. Just Michael Broadwater. Okay. Michael Broadwater has really bounced back. I need to see him pitching more frequently. I'm going to bump him over to full season class A. Let him get some more reps there. Damn, Victor Almohuer came kind of close to getting an all-star appearance. That's pretty wild. He's only ever been an all-star one time. Which was last season. Alright, let's go up to the trading deadline and then we probably have some decisions to make. Some important decisions uh, that'll help us decide how the rest of the team is going to work. Uh, Dinuyas, I'm just going to send you right back to the miners. Uh, I don't really need you at the moment. Andres Espada is a reasonably okay reliever. My man here is already 36, though. How on earth have you pitched this infrequently? I guess you just haven't had the innings. How are you only now getting into arbitration? Really crazy. I don't hate this deal, but I don't love it either. Like, Alex Rosado is a nothing. Uh, I think he doesn't have a whole lot to offer in a lot of ways. But I think I can get something more useful than that. So I'm going to politely but firmly say no. Uh, Jai Woodard, I'd like to go out and lock your development. I don't want you uh, getting ruined. Uh, if we can avoid it. So yeah, we're going to let you start in rookie ball, get some pitching in, and then hopefully make some make some strides. A Michael Thames, again, is fine. I don't think it's what I'm looking for, though. And of course, who's the one pitcher that's consistently been great for us this season? The one who just got suspended for two games. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. It's fine. Is there something about my team that just says, give me your, your, your poor, your tired, your awful pitchers learning to breathe free? I don't hate this pitcher, but I'd have to give up something else in order to accept him from Tampa. Uh, but I do think he does have some potential, and he's a decent pitcher. Um, what is it going to take to get Nelson Alvarez off of you? A lot of really bad players. Like, literally, there's hundreds of possibilities. Have John Aguirre, then. This guy sucks. Why would we look like idiots if we accepted this offer? Like, what is it about Nelson Alvarez that you're also terrified of? I don't know, guys, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make the deal. I'm going to make the deal. I'm gonna put. No, I do need Alvarez on the main roster if I'm going to bother carrying him at all. Wow. If anybody will take Jose Espino, he's gone. Uh, any prospects I could get from Mr. Espino? Not a one. Okay.
I'm going to take Alex Duran, not because I want him, but because I don't want him. That frees up a bunch of money, and it doesn't cost me anything major. And now I can put Nelson Alvarez on the roster. And he can do middle relief work. Um, how do we have 14 pitchers? Oh, right, because of Williams, you can do both. Williams can can pitch as well as he can hit. Um, Mike Tinch is just getting lit up this season. He's got five losses. That would put us in first place as someone else's closer. The question is, do I trust Julien to be the closer? He's having another really good season. But I think he's more valuable to me if he's pitching in the eighth. Let's go ahead and give um, Manny Osorio the role as our seventh inning setup guy. And take him off long relief duties. I want him to be in when the game matters more. Oh, the rest of this looks good. And that'll do. That'll do, pig. I still want to make room for Sal Rada, though. I think Rada has a lot of value to offer. Just because he's such a weird guy. But on the other, other hand... Um, he might end up having to replace a starter, so I'm willing to let that kind of go. Speaking of starters, how is Jay Jackson doing? He is doing terribly. His peripherals are decent. He's just getting lit up. Like, the walks are higher than I'd like, but the strikeouts are at a good place. He seems to, you know, last longer into games. So we're going to see what happens as the season progresses. This is the number one thing I need to address if I can get one in trade. If I can get a starter that I can trust, uh, that's going to be a pretty gigantic benefit to me. Hmm. Ben Slider. Does he have a slider? He, he does. It's just not very good. Uh, what a name, though. What a name. I don't hate Jerry Knight, but I'm not going to give you anything good in exchange for him. How is Sean Hill doing out of Curiosita. He's had a bit of a bounce back season. He's playing well for Toronto. They're making the classic blunder of letting him play every day. But, I mean, good for you. Another trade proposal. Jason Rangy. Uh, no thanks. But I'll tell you what I do want. I do want a reliable starting pitcher. Ideally somebody younger, if I can manage it. Like, I would put together a decent-sized package. Let's use the player finder. Which, again, is always under sign of free agent. No, it isn't. Here it is. Find a player. Okay, pitchers. Let's look for all leagues. I want somebody 16 to 28. Starting pitcher. And I want him to have an overall of at least 50 and a potential of at least 50. Hook me up, yo. Okay, lots of choices here. Lots of choices. 
I'm gonna have to give up a lot for players like say Omar Argeta though. Like they're not gonna give him up easily. I also don't think I want him. Uh, that low, no, he's a really tremendous pitcher. I would love to have him. I couldn't even finish that thought. Is there anybody at all I can trade you? No. I'm not gonna bother trying to put together a package because I just don't think that's feasible. I'm not gonna take Gabe Hutcherson. I'm not gonna bail you out of a stupid contract. That's not how I roll. I'm trying to find somebody that isn't in the makers yet because there's a much higher likelihood. Oh my gosh, really? Who the heck is your agent? Oh, never mind. You almost got me there. I would love Jorge Gallegos. Is there any way you even consider giving him to me though? Oh, he's not actually not eligible to be traded for. I see. So we can ignore that safely. I'm probably... Anyone where the second number is blue, uh, I'm assuming I can't get. I don't think that's a very fair thing to bring up. A guy like a Jaden Bowie might be a bit more acquirable. All right, let's look at our prospects. Let's look, let's sort by potential and see if we can start offering some prospects to pry this guy loose. Javier Roberson is a very good player, potentially. But he's the kind of thing that might get us started. Nope. And if I offered you... Jose Barrera? Does that get you anything? No. So as it turns out, people don't want to give up amazing young starters that are cost controlled. Who knew? All right, so clearly I'm gonna have to be a bit more creative. And I'm probably gonna take an older pitcher because no one's gonna give me a younger one. Juan Lozano, what is your deal? Good stuff, movement and control. Why are you on the trading block? Like, yes, his price will go up in in arbitration, but why wouldn't you want to keep him? You're not getting Juan Love. That's a non-starter. But I could be convinced to give up Xavier Roberson. Roberson just adds Abishon. I don't want to add a prospect, or I don't want to give up a prospect to get a prospect. Um, I could give you Jay Jackson. Yeah, you're still getting to the point where you saw some of my very best players. It's not worth it. Um, I'd have to add in another mid range prospect. Victor Serrano is very movable. Let's offer him up. It's not making enough of a difference. Um, you really don't want to give him up. And I'm not going to give you a player that's younger than him and might be as good as he is. What if I offered Alex Moreno too? Okay, but add an Alex Moreno, we're getting options, but I'm still not getting the right options. Uh, as badly as I need a starting pitcher, I will happily instead just take a pitcher who is not quite as good. Might be a little bit older, 
and still come away with a better deal. I don't love the velocity here. I'm going to be honest with you. <sighs> now this is what I'm talking about here. They want to get rid of Javi Gaussman. I want a really good starting pitcher. I'll give you Jackson for that. Done. So Javi Guzman, welcome to the Pittsburgh Pirates. I hope you enjoy your stay here. Um, I'm literally bringing you here so you can stabilize the rotation. So please don't fuck it up. Anybody else I want to trade? Anybody else I'd like to trade? I wouldn't mind trading Mike Grasham. I just don't see anybody giving me anything for him. But we can try it. If I ask for prospects, what are, are my options for Mr. Grasham here? Nothing. All right, I probably will mess with that then. Is Jordan Munoz going to figure it out? This is the other area we can improve at. I don't have an amazing internal option of somebody that I really trust uh, in the high minors that could be worthy of a promotion. Uh, first of all, Xavier Roberson is way too good to be an A ball. Uh, he's crushing it, so I'm going to kick him all the way up to double A. Uh, Broadwater can stay in A ball a little bit longer. I'm going to Salgado and High A for a little bit longer. Same with Campos. Um, okay. And Rada's going to go right back on the IL at some point. How do we address Munoz? Now, here's the thing. I cannot send him to the Myers unless he wants to be sent. And he refuses. So I'm going to send anyone to say Julian Williams. And Julian Williams is actually having an okay debut season. I kind of don't want to mess with that. I kind of just want to let him be him. Because he actually has been a very productive piece to this roster. I think he's got a lot of potential. Salgado's obviously amazing. I'm not going to do anything with Salgado. So my options are basically trade Munoz for a better version of Munoz or just suffer. Like, this is really weird to me. He has never hit this poorly before. But the other thing is this. I can't afford to keep him in the lineup if he's going to keep screwing up. If he's going to keep being such a poor performer, I can't do it. I cannot have that man in my lineup. It's just not good enough. Uh, yes, he's got 20 homers understood but he's hurting the team by being in the lineup <sighs> i wish you would stop showing me the pitching numbers i don't care
I, I really don't care. Um... Freddy Suarez has lower war value because he hasn't played as much. I understand that, and I accept it. I could also upgrade a third base. Uh, if we could find a decent third baseman, that would help. But I, I don't really see it. I could bench Joe and try Servine. Joe is struggling mightily this season. Is Servine hitting any better? He is. Servine's actually playing much better than Joe this season. Um, let's make the switch there. That should be an easy, minimally, uh, a minimal change in the roster that should offer us a little bit more offense at the margins. I could I could bench Munoz and play Turner more. Let me check something out here, actually. No, you're actually playing better against lefties than righties. Yeah, righties are eating you alive this season. That is just so bizarre to me. Like, this is what you're meant to be good at, and you just aren't. I don't know what happened to you this season... Uh, but yeah, you are not performing at anywhere near the level we need you to perform at. Like, maybe we promote Turner and give Turner regular bats at TH, but the thing is... <sighs> maybe I'm fooling myself, but I have to think that Munoz is getting close, that he's working it out, and that eventually he'll be hitting closer to where he used to hit. And I don't think there's anybody on the market that can give me a guarantee that he will play better than Munoz has. I'll take a look. Um, I will look at the Blocko detrading. I mean, Ed English would be pretty cool. Kevin Griffin is not a batter. He's a bad reliever. He sort of hits. Yeah, none of these guys are doing it for me. They're all, like, fine. But none of them offers the combination of upside and overall quality that Munoz has. So I think we just soak, suck it up and hope he figures out his shit. Because uh, I think that's the only option available to me right now. Just hope John Navio can continue to drag this team kicking and screaming uh, to the playoffs. Remember how it's like, mm, John Navio sucks. I better trade him. Boy, was I wrong. And I own the shit out of that. I own the shit out of that. Williams got rookie of the month again. Amazing. You are oh as a reliever I agree you are as you are rated sixty one or higher as a reliever that I agree with. Okay. I would like to go up to roster expansion and hopefully get to add another bat. Take some of the heat off of Munoz. Um, some more I can have maybe Munoz just play less often, potentially or something. Or I could lose Abishan for the rest of the season. That's exactly what I wanted. You suck, game. Um, Calderon back in the rotation is probably the best I can do right now. Like, I know Calderon isn't terribly thrilling, 
but I trust him more than any random rookie I could call up. And now I can activate Sal Rada and make him the long relief for emergency starter that he's always been at a high level for us. Uh, and that'll be good. Um... Hey, if Fuji can figure out how to throw a bit more effectively as a starter, I will consider him as a starter. Um, I don't even care. We'll give him a tryout. Uh, but I do want him to keep working on his shit. Um, in the offseason, I'm thinking we might trade Joe because... He's wanting to get paid like a great catcher, and I don't think that he is anymore. I think a partnership between, say, Servine and maybe Roberson would be a better fit for us as a franchise, um, especially if Roberson can have a good year in AAA, or in AA, rather. I just don't see a ton of value in paying Joe a huge sum of money. I just don't think it benefits the team as much as trading him and getting interesting pieces might. So we'll see what happens the rest of this season. Damn, he scored some runs against the Diamondbacks. There's 17 runs. That's pretty cool. I can't believe how, for so long, I was like, I have too many outfielders. I think you're of max outfielders. And now I'm badly missing outfielders. Oh, okay, it's just one day out. Um, Aruvalo, you have done yeoman service. You are by no means Mike Soto, however. Uh, I'm going to let Soto rehab just because, as valuable as he is, I want him to be added when our rosters expand. Uh, so I don't have to give up uh, any of my current infielders or outfielders. Okay, we're going to miss for Dean for three weeks. Um, I'm just going to play Williams every day then uh, until morale improves. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but I will play him every day until Verdeen is, is ready to come back. 300th homer for Hill. Wild. I was blank blanked by Sergio Bonuelos. That's not cool, but okay. I don't approve of that. But I, I mean, I, I can yell, but that doesn't help anybody, I don't think. Um... <laughs> oh, the Yankees are losing record. Oh, that's amazing. That fills my heart with glee. My black heart with glee. Uh, cool. Friends, there is a non-zero chance that Julian Williams has actually pipped Franklin Verdeen, but we'll see. Uh, we will definitely see uh, how that all works out. Fuji is getting... Oh, wow. Oh, that's as relief pitcher. Okay. I was like, I'm going to call him up right now. And it's like, oh. Okay. That's fine. Alex Castro throwing harder. Xavier Roberson improving as a catcher and hitting a little better. Wonderful. How are you rated as a starter? You're 45-53. Okay. Okie dokie artichoke. So give me Soto back. That's a given. And probably Fuji comes back too. Oh, and I have another roster spot I can use. Oh, because of Verdeen's injury. Um... Sure. 
Sure, Juan Camacho, why not? You can, you're gonna be emergency starter, long relief, you're gonna be middle relief. And then Mike Soto just jumps right back into the lineup where Arevalo was. And he's gonna hit fifth ahead of Almahuer and Munoz. Um, because Julian Williams is doing fine in the leadoff spot. Oh my god, Kay. Yeah, he's doing fine in the leadoff spot. I see no reason to replace him in that role right now. Uh, I think he's doing very fine work. Um, we're going to slide on over to here and generate depth chart. Arvalo is not playing that frequently at third base. Don't be stupid. I know Arvalo is a better defender than Soto. I don't really care. Because Soto's bat is invaluable and Soto is good enough at third base. <coughs> I could bench Munoz and play Soto at DH, but I think I want Soto to play at third. <coughs> Just because Aravayo's overall capabilities aren't that exciting. Good defender, okay hitter, but nothing fantastic. So let us now advance time. Really this season, I don't care if we don't win the division because our division isn't good enough to get the bye anyway. Uh, so if we don't win the division, that's just, oh well. Maybe this is all a long con and we're going to get into the playoffs and just win every game. It's It could happen. It probably won't, but it could happen, right? It is a possibility. It is a thing that is possible. Do I want Verdeen back? I mean, Verdeen offers something to this team. He's a fairly decent hitter. I'm going to have him rehab, and then we will reevaluate uh, when playoff time comes. We've clinched the playoffs, uh, which is nice. The problem is that every game we're winning, uh, oh, let's do this one too. Why am I playing Cincinnati? Like, I genuinely don't care. There is nothing to play for. I'm not gonna get a flip in If I lose a player in this meaningless game, I will be incredibly annoyed. You know what? Arevalo is not the end of the world. Uh, I think I'm alright with losing him for a few weeks. And then I can have Verdeen back. Most meaningless division title in history because I still don't get a buy for it. Only the top two teams get one. And the Nationals and Padres are both way better than we were. A pitching triple crown for Nate Sinclair, you said. Amazing. I spent so much time focused on what's gone wrong this season, I completely neglected Nate Sinclair and how amazing he, he was. So thank you, Nate. Um, much is expected of you. And Mr. Pagan won a batting title. 
That's pretty solid. That's good news. Uh, playoff roster. Who are we leaving off the playoff roster right now? I'm fine with everyone we're leaving off. Um, I will make one change, though. I want Sal Rada on this roster, and I want him quite badly. So I'm going to leave Camacho off, and I'm going to add Rada. Rada is just the perfect kind of pitcher for me uh, in an emergency situation. And then Fujii can be a good uh, middle relief, long reliever. That looks good. Um, lineups. Does Wolves that much worse against lefties? He, he's bad enough against lefties that I do think... As long as I've got him, playing Verdeen against lefties does make some sense. Um, generate me a new depth chart, please. Okay, generate me a new depth chart here. Okay. Uh, pitching staff, the guy I'm going to leave off is obviously Rios, who had the worst season. No, I trust Rios more than I trust Calderon. Uh, Calderon didn't start very much at all. Wish I had freaking Avish on. But, alas. So we're going to go four-man rotation, and Calderon is going to be middle relief. I don't have a lefty killer right now because of Osorio. Wait, why is Osorio not on the playoff roster? Yeah, no, 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 no. I do need a Soria. Let's leave Mike Grasham actually off of the roster. Uh, he's pretty badly suffering. Because then what I can do is I can end the silliness of letting Julian Williams be eligible to pitch. Um, at least for now. So we're going to go set game strategy and turn off using him as a two-way player. I want you hitting all the time now, Mr. Williams. You had a really great year for us. Um, a really tremendous year. And I am eager to see where we can go from here. Uh, I'm going to tell you this much. Uh, we're pitching Nate Sinclair. Oh, no, we're not. He's not healthy. He's still tired. Uh-oh. It's fine. Uh, Rios comes through. Excellent. Uh, Juan Love wasn't fantastic, but he was good enough. How do you sink an Inferno? You know what? Never mind. And a well-deserved sweep. Well done to Javi Guzman. To, uh, Javi Guzman. Uh, wait, why did Salrada end up with the win? Because Guzman got hurt. And so did, oh my gosh, really game. Uh, they both off the roster now. This sucks. Uh, take me to the next playoff round, and then I'm going to make some changes to the postseason roster. Do I bring Grasham back? Do I want Grasham to be on board? Is that a good use of the playoff roster? I get up to three players, which is, which is fine, but... I think I have to add Grasham just because I need another arm out of the pen. Um, and then who else do we put on the roster? Pitching. I only have 12 pitchers right now. I really need a 13th. 
I'm going to put Martin Rubio on the playoff roster. I don't want to, but I don't really have a better choice. Uh, all right, so it's going to be Sinclair, Love, Rios. And Fuji. Uh, you're going to be our lefty killer. You're going to be an emergency starter if I need one. And you're going to be a long reliever emergency starter if I need one. All right, let's get to it, friends. San Diego is scary. They were a really good team. I'm hoping that we can be competitive. We won the first game. Excellent. Uh, we lost the second game. We win the third game. And there we go. Well done. Um, Fuji gave us four innings. And they weren't amazing. They weren't terrible. And the bullpen carried us through. Well done. Very well done. We're going to sim up to the next playoff round. Um, Salrata wasn't that wasn't that great. I don't think I'm gonna bother putting him on the postseason roster. I think I'm gonna leave him off. If I could have had, uh, oh boy. It's the postseason. Can I send you to the minors now? No. Okay. Uh, sure, I'll put him on the major league roster. He just won't do anything. All right. We get a game one lead. Excellent. Uh, Love is really struggling in the playoffs here. Uh, that's not an amazing sign. Um, oh, I do want to carry a fifth starter. Uh, we'll actually see. Uh, I don't know how I feel about a fifth starter yet. Rios got lit up. Uh, that's a crazy game, but we won it, and that's important. And another victory there. Oh, golly. No! Okay, love, I don't know what happened to you, but you're just getting obliterated in the postseason. Uh, and that really concerns me. Uh, but we're going to play this game. I'm turn my headphones on first, though. <sighs> Fine. Of course, they've got a guy with 62 homers. I don't know why every other franchise can just like grow amazing home run hitters on trees, and I can't. Oh, but uh, that's all right. I'll survive. Maybe. Come on, Williams. Do Williams-y things. 
I mean, I guess I never... Sp okay. I will take it, my friends. Do I do... Do I dare do a hit and run? Let's try it. Nice. So we got runners on first and second for Mr. Pagan here. Who strikes out. John Navio. Uh, wild Pitch. Come on, my dude. Just hit it to the outfield. That'll get us a run. Or get walked and load the bases for Mike Soto. Come on, mate. Baseball good. That is not baseball and good. Oh my god. You literally just had to hit it to the outfield and we would have had a run, if not more than one. Oh my gosh, Soto, really? That's okay. Nice. Nice! That's a mighty fine performance right there. Uh, that's not so nice. I can't believe I had bases loaded with one out and we got nothing to show for it. I mean, I actually, I very much can believe it, but I didn't want to believe it. There you go, a nice little bloop from Mario Servine. Nice work. What can Freddy Suarez do? He can hit another bloop. Heads up base running, Servine. Oh no, you, you stopped at second. That's actually probably smart. You're not very fast. And you strike out. Is there some sort of curse that falls me across all playthroughs? Where we just strained runners on base constantly. Because it seems like that's a thing. I don't want it to be a thing, but it seems like that's a thing. Oh, no. That's at least a double. That could be a triple. Oh, it's only a double. Get Quintero out, please. That's not getting him out. That's getting runs in scoring position for a Galaculio Alvarez. Come on, Rios. No! <sighs> this is what I find frustrating sometimes. And it's frustrating about baseball. Let me make this clear. There is no earthly reason they should have three runs and we should have zero. Other than the fact that they got the hits in the red sequence and I didn't. Uh, and also the fact that Victor Rios is not a very good pitcher. But yeah, that was pretty gross that they just effortlessly score three runs without even trying. Uh, and yet I can't even score one, even with bases loaded. Uh, cause you suck, uh, game. Oh my gosh, Pagan! Alright, well at least Rio struck him out, so that's fine, I guess. But you did give up a three-run homer, and I still don't have any runs. And runs are important in baseball. That's a little dink, I suppose. Come on, Pagan, make up for your error. I, uh, what the shit, guys? Like, yes, he's a really good strikeout pitcher. I understand that. But that's no reason for you to just flail wildly. So nobody hit that out. Nope, just kidding. Why couldn't you have done that with the bases loaded, you jerk? Really? Just give one right up there, Rios. 
just fucking cough it up. It's it's exactly what I wanted you to do. Um, I don't have anybody ready to bring in. Uh, I don't want to bring in Gratcham's crappy ass. But I don't think I have a choice. I need someone to just eat innings. Please don't give up another homer. You know what? I should have said please don't give up a hit, but I tried to temper my expectations here. Yeah, you're getting creamed, Rios. I need you out of the game post-haste. Yeah, you're just warming. I can't bring you in until you're fully warm. Shit. And that's another homer. Oh my god. How does this happen? How do I get the one team that can get runners on base but never score? Uh, that, that may be the game already. We can't keep the ball in the damn ballpark. And yet, we can't put together enough hits to score. Really, dude? So you turned a double play. That's nice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Quit fucking striking out. Nope. Nope. They got the big time pitching performance and I didn't. Uh, that's going to be a story of this game unless things change real fast. Really? You can't fucking cool off. Oh my gosh. Just stop. <sighs> Guys, I'm gonna be real with you. If we don't, oh my God, you fucking dumb shit. Yeah, so let's take the guy with a hundred power and give him more base runners. Really? You've got to find more bullshit ways to give them base runners. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god. Just end my suffering. Just fucking stop. Uh, no, we're, we're done. That was disgusting. That was... Oh my gosh. Nothing. I, I want you both to feel really badly for yourselves because that was, how do we get nine hits and only one run? Why do we do this every season in the playoffs? Why does our number three hitter strike out four fucking times and not get even a single base hit? I... Like, let me be clear. I don't blame the offense. I blame Victor fucking Rios deciding it would be fun to pitch batting practice to uh, to the Washington Nationals. And then Mike Grasham deciding, hold my beer, I can be even worse. <sighs> you could have at least made it fucking competitive. But you just got rolled over on. Like, I genuinely don't care who wins this World Series. I hope the Nationals lose because that was just bullshit how many runs they scored. But, yeah. Oh, Hugo Arrivalo will fucking save us. Oh, my gosh. I genuinely thought we could have made the World Series this season. Once I saw it easily, we beat... Austin and San Diego 
and how good we were doing against the Nationals. I should have played game six. I should have played game six instead. Because when you see it comes down to Victor freaking Rios, he's going to fuck it up. At least the Nationals got swept, as they deserve, for being unsportsmanlike pricks or keeping continuing to score runs and the game wasn't even in doubt. Uh, I'm extremely bitter, but that's okay. I've got a fair chance of getting both the Cy Young and the MVP, which is cool, I guess. But not as cool as I might like. Okay. Um, some posting is happening. Nobody good. Uh, you really want to come back, Rasham, after I deliberately try to screw you over as much as possible? Um... Like, you made a bunch of money, so I don't want to hear it, pal. Our pitching coach and our first base coach both are tired. As did Kirby Camacho. So we're going to have some coaching decisions to make real quick. And then I shall show you uh, how the season actually went. So let's do coaching first. Our pitching coach. I mean, CJ Lessor seems like he's overdue for a shot at the big league job. So let's promote you. First base coach. I think Charlie Miles would be a fine choice. Oh, he is normal. Do we care if people are... Does anyone dislike normal people? Uh, weirdly, CJ Lessor doesn't like normal people. Even though he is normal, it's fine. Uh, I'm going to promote you to become the first base coach. Um, our new, our new uh, manager will be... Solomon McGuire. You can have AAA. Eric Basabe gets promoted to be AAA pitching coach. Uh, Juan Sosa is most definitely ready for a bump up to AA. I'm going to grab Craig Barnes from low A and promote him over. Uh, and promote him over in. I'm not saying that M is bad, he isn't, but he's just not as good. Uh, which of our rookie league people would most benefit from managing? Dameron's really a, co a pitching coach. He's not really a manager, so I'm going to make him a pitching coach in low A, where he's a little bit better. Nate Swenson's also an outstanding pitching coach, but I don't have another pitching vacancy for him. Andy Brashear is, I think, wasted as a hitting coach. Let's go ahead and make you the manager of high A, Greensboro. And then we'll promote Sergio. No, Sergio Gutierrez wouldn't take that job because it's a lateral move. I could promote, like, Christopher Marte or Edgar Trujillo. If either of them seem like they'd be good manager material, but I don't think that they would be. Jim Muller might be, actually. Uh, let's promote Jim Muller to uh, Class A Bradenton. And then let's start hiring some more coaches. So for the manager, I want mechanics, please. Uh, Josh Parrish, I'd like you to be the manager, please. Best hitting coach is obviously the 36-year-old. No, it's Felix Laguna. 
Let's see if we can get him to sign. Our other manager, again, I want to focus on mechanics in the lower leagues. Uh, although development is certainly not unwelcome. Let's hire Elizondo here. And our final hitting coach shall be... Uh, Isayao Kinoshida, just because he's so freaking young. He's got a really great feature ahead of him. All right. I'm not going to look at arbitration yet. Uh, we're going to save that for next episode because this one's already running a bit long. Instead, I'm going to look at how the season went. So we sort by batting stats and we sort by war. John Navio literally took this club on his back. The only reason we were half as good as he were is because John Navio said, oh, rookie of the year, how do I follow up that year? How about an MVP? Because uh, he had an amazing season. Uh, I don't always make the right choice, but when I do find it, I nail it out of the ballpark, and Tony Pagan has been a revelation. We got a full year out of him. He won a batting title and was generally an excellent player. Henry Salgado is beginning to concern me, though. He keeps trending in the wrong direction. He's losing a little bit of offensive capability with each season. And that does concern me. I don't necessarily need MVP-level performance every year, but I am concerned that he's losing power. Because um, on Henry Salgado, the can at 35 to 40 home runs is just that much more valuable to me. But he also walks almost as much as he strikes out. So, you know, you, you give and you take. Julian Williams uh, had a wonderful rookie campaign. Um, I think he's probably got an early lead uh, for next season center field job. Just putting that out there. The only thing Mike Soto did wrong this season was get hurt. Otherwise, he took everything he had done in his sophomore year and just do better at it. He was a better hitter. He drew more walks. He had four more power. He was a better player. The only problem he had was that he got hurt. I wonder if we should move Soto to first base and maybe make Pagan the DH. Speaking of DHs, this can't happen. I don't know what the fuck happened to Munoz this season. He better figure it out real damn fast. I can't have a DH costing my team two wins. It cannot be done. It is not acceptable. Don't be that big a fuck up. Um, Freddy Suarez was one healthy pretty productive, a reasonably good hitter, and a pretty good shortstop as well. Almaquer, after years of overperforming, underperformed this year. Uh, he was still valuable, still a good player, and I'm still happy that we have him, but he seemed to slip a little bit. But make no mistake about it, if you want one person to blame for how the season turned out, Hi. I genuinely don't understand. I, I do not understand for the life of me what happened. Strikeouts went up. Hitting just vanished. He just couldn't hit this season. I don't know what his problem was, but hopefully he figures it the fuck out. Because that was awful. We got pretty good performances off the bench. I'm pretty happy about that, except for Renato Turner, who wasn't that great either. Um, the offense could have been better, but I'm reasonably happy with what we got from most of the team. And the good news is, is that, well, I don't know that Navio is going to be this amazing every season. I have reason to believe that other players might have a little bit more to show us. Um... This can't fucking happen again, Munoz. You almost single-handedly killed our season. <clears throat> I don't know what you gotta do. Figure it the shit out. That's all I gotta say to you. I actually will do arbitration and stuff this episode. Let's look at pitching stats. 
Okay, Nate Sinclair, you were a hired hand. You came in and you dominated. Um, you were amazing in the playoffs. You're everything we wanted when I paid $43 million for you. Um, thank you very much and do more of it next year. Juan Love had a very good season, but I think he was maybe a little bit gassed because when the postseason happened, uh, he was garbage. He just got hit really hard all the time. Uh, so hopefully with another season, he will continue to develop and unlock that extra gear that we know that he has. Still very impressed by him, though. Uh, Mike Tinch had an off year for him. He certainly didn't help us. Um, but I think he's as good as anyone else. Then the rest of the starting pitching staff kicks in. And we notice how bare the cupboard was beyond the top two. Um, I counted on Victor Rios repeating his previous season. He didn't. Like, not even by a little bit. I counted on Spandar Abishan producing a quality season. He was good when he was not hurt, but not good enough. We imported Javi Guzman, expecting big things from him. He was really good for us down the stretch and then got hurt. And arguably Masakami Fujii deserves a real opportunity because I don't have a better starting pitcher. Um, this was not a great pitching team. It was a great bullpen. We had a lot of people in the bullpen that really pulled in heavy work to get us, to make us as good as we were. But the rotation was really lacking. Um, really, really lacking, and we're going to need more arms if we're going to make it back to the postseason. Let's talk arbitration. Sal Rada wants 900 grand to just come back. I'm not giving you a starting rotation, but I will bring you back. Nelson Alvarez does want to raise, but down the stretch, he is actually pretty helpful for us. I think bringing him back is a fair decision to make. I shall do so with eagerness. Um, Pagan, you're asking for a lot of money, but I can't rightly tell you you don't deserve it in one capacity or another. So I will give you your one year deal. And Jordan Munoz. As crappy as you were, you're asking for a really tiny contract. I don't mind giving you another chance to prove that you deserve it. Am I going to bring back Javi Guzman? I guess it depends how much money he wants. I could bring him back on a one-year deal. Maybe build in... No, he's racked. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to commit some different resources to a pitcher who's racked. I can do better in free agency. Uh, or through trade. Offer extension. Offer extension. Offer extension. Offer extension. Offer extension. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Mr. Ling Kung Joe. Joe has been a really solid catcher for us for a few seasons now. But I get the feeling he's hit his ceiling. He will never be a better catcher than he is now. Let me be clear. I don't think Servine is a better catcher either. But what Servine has is the fact that he is a clubhouse leader. So he gives us leadership and he can hopefully help us develop one of our younger catchers. Whether that's Xavier Roberson getting a shot in spring training, whether it's a guy like 
Julian Farias getting some reps next season. I've got enough young catchers that I want to give one of them an opportunity rather than stick with a guy who's, quite frankly, overpaid. Um, Michael Broadwater is slowly developing quite nicely. He performed at a high level at A ball. That's going to be double A for you. Leo Campos has done enough to get promoted to double A. Was it Michael Broadwater? Broadwater's already in high A. Broadwater should be in double A. Orlando Salgado, I think, could benefit from repeating high A. Yes, he had a good war, but that's because he pitched a bunch of innings. His ERA is pretty ghastly. It makes me kind of sick. So we're going to let him repeat high A and see what he can figure out. Katina lost this entire season through injury. I think we're going to let him try again. Uh, who's in rookie league? That is worth promoting potentially. I want Woodard to just get more time, so I'm not going to rush him. All that is fine. Let us quickly go into the minor league system. We're going to add a filter. And we're going to put is rookie league. I'm going to sort by H. And I would like you to filter uh what? Why can oh there it is. Derp. And potential has to be greater than or equal to twenty five. No, uh, I want it to be less than or equal to twenty five. Right? No, is it most 25? Because I want to get rid of all these players. And you're all cut. There we go. And clear the filter, please. Honestly, probably anybody in the rookies that has 30 or less, in all honesty, could probably be removed. If I'm being real with you. So is rookie league and potential is is at most 30. There we go. Some more players I can release. There we go. Oh, all players. Uh, I'm not going to let these jerks slip by just because they happen to not be uh, just because they happen to not be um, pitchers. There we go. That brings the rookie league total to 77. That's still way too much, but I feel a little bit better about it. Um. Okay, so we're going to trade Joe, and the question is going to become, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a starting pitcher. If I can get a good starting pitcher, losing Joe will be no biggie. Uh, it'll be tremendous. Is there a good starting pitcher to be had in exchange for a catcher like Joe? Joe Mama. I saw a couple of 50s. I'm going to go back and look at them. I'm trying to see if I can get greedy. I'm not picking up one Espinosa. Raul Moro, on the other hand. No, not with that low velocity. I know you're young. I know you're good. But I don't think you're that good or that young. But you've got really good stuff numbers, despite your low velocity. Which is completely bizarre to me. But you're only 30. 
And you're only going to earn arbitration, which is going to be really cheap. But I think I'd rather get a better player if I can find it. Let's scroll up to the top here. And let's look at Jeremy Werner. Werner has tremendous movement, good control, good stuff, and a good fastball changeup mix with a couple of secondary pitches. I would take this deal in a heartbeat if they eat a sizable portion of that salary. If I asked you to eat his entire salary. So if they'll eat 25% of the salary and give me Jeremy Warner. Um, that's good to know. Let's go back to shop a player and let's see about Brendan Mast. Again, not great movement, but a good mix of pitches. He is 35 and he's earning less money, a lot less money. But I think that Werner is the better pitcher, so I think this is the right call. Uh, but please eat a portion of his salary. Can he give you like a crappy player to get Tim for 50% of the salary? Like somebody I don't care about? Like Moises Sosa, who will never play a real position. Can I get you even more of his salary? Nah, I'm just going to take this. That's fine. Um, so that solves one of our rotation spots. Um, so that gives us love. Uh, Sinclair and Werner and it's just going to be a question of finding a couple of good pieces whether that's a healthy Avishan or a healthy Fujii or something to that effect so that's very good I'm very pleased with that deal um, and I think it's going to benefit us quite a bit especially because I'm only paying half his salary um, that seals it for me. Because I'm not going to find a player of this caliber for that cheap. Uh, that's what convinced me to part with two players for him. Um, so I'm very happy about that. I will keep him around. It's going to be great. Um, anybody else I want to trade? Not really. I'd love to get rid of Mike Grasham, but I feel that nobody will give me anything for him, uh, which is their right, obviously. Okay. All right. Who did I give up for Javi Guzman? Is it someone that's gonna make me sad? I gave up Jay Jackson. Jay Jackson wasn't very good and probably won't ever be very good. So I'm okay with that, actually. All right, my friends, uh, that concludes today's episode. Hopefully we can make some upgrades in the offseason to really help this team stand out. Um, because we just didn't get pitching when the playoffs started. That is what sunk us. We didn't get the pitching we needed when we needed it. Even with Javi Guzman. And look, if he had been healthy and we didn't have to rely so heavily on Rios... I honestly think we've got a fair chance of winning that world, making it to the World Series. Um, we could get real sneaky and give Broadwater an audition at the major league level. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think that's too much too soon. Um, I want to keep my eyes on the prize and have him ready to go and say two seasons. 
but yes, my friends, we're going to have a new starting catcher next season, whether that's Servine starting every day, or whether that's a guy like Farias getting more opportunities. We'll figure it out. Uh, but we're going to have a new starting catcher one way or the other. And it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Um, Franklin Verdeen may have gotten pipped. On the other hand, I love this kind of bench off, kind of bench off the bat, bat off the bench. Or even just letting him do what he did this season and platooning with Julian Williams, who struggles a bit with hitting left-handed pitching, uh, would be phenomenal. Uh, but I think he really offered a lot, and but I feel really good about center field for the first time in a long time. Having said that, I do acknowledge the fact that I can't set it at 324 every season, but he also had really good power numbers too. So I feel pretty good about having him somewhere in this lineup. Whether that means moving to the corners eventually, I don't know. Jordan Munoz, don't you ever fucking do this again. Uh, this is not okay. And you should be angry at your performance. You should be very angry at your performance. And you need to figure it out. And you need to figure it out fast. Because I'm not going to carry a DH who can't hit. Um, that's literally your entire job. So figure it out, ass clown. Figure it out. Not you, Nago. You're not an ass clown. Jordan Munoz is an ass clown. You're amazing and could win an MVP this season. So I can't be mad at you. Uh, but I'm very mad at you. Uh, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, if you have, please remember to like and subscribe. But until next time, this has been Guardian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.